central bank and the quantitative easing debate analysis based on the past record. Hello and welcome to Inventiva. This is Sonia Gatlach, back again with the big news. All the readers who are versed with economics even at the intermediate level knew that this was coming because, well, it happens after every crisis. Yes, the inevitable discussion on the central banks and their bond buying quantitative easing tampering that is so delicate that it keeps everyone hooked on their toes is happening all over again. While we get stuck in this loop time and again, there can be no denial of the fact that there is some new unknown fact that comes out every time. Well, looks like so in this case and in this time around too. So let us find out. To begin with, things aren't too different this time around as well. While the proponents continue to flag the quantitative easing order as necessary financial policy tools to stabilize the economic during a crisis, the opponents continue to blame this rise in economic inequality and inflationary pressure on it again. Economics all around the world have given considerable time and energy to this debate and while both of the sides make enough sense, we are yet to declare the winners. However, the purpose of this discussion is not to talk about the seesaw of pros and cons of the quantitative easing but to analyze a different side of it which economists have uncovered rather recently. Allow me to take you through it one step at a time. Let's reach back to where it all began. At the beginning of the pandemic when the economy needed a rather large push because of the economic slowdown, central banks undertook quantitative easing in an attempt to save the drowning global economics. Both rich and emerging economists have been equally proactive in the process. Cut to the present day, inflation is plummeting through the roof in the global economy and well, the rich economics are recovering at a considerably steady pace, while those who are still struggling with the virus and active cases are still struggling with the slumped economy. The inflation has been rather high for times too. Case in point, the Indian economic nonetheless, a recent report published by JP Morgan Chase revealed that the central bank of rich countries have cumulatively grown their assets by USD 11 trillion, with the number expected to go as high USD 28 trillion in the market capitalization by the end of this year. For others, however, the potential tampering process is in the talks, with the Banks of Canada reducing its base of bond purchase and the Banks of Australia declaring the notion of base curtailment in the coming months. Some central banks are even reconsidering the earlier quantitative easing plans that were put in place, like the Banks of New Zealand, which claimed to revise USD 70 billion asset purchase target it had earlier set. The stimulated economic recovery that happened as an aftermath of the earlier containment of the virus in the country is now the prime reason for like discussion. As if others like Bank of England and the proposed to complete their set target before reducing the bond buy rate. What is quantitative easing? Well, we are thinking that the exact same thing. The Federal Bank, which has been rather tactile as yet, has a lot riding in its shoulder. Even the interest rate, like plan announcement, led to a series of currency disappearing from the emerging economics and we do not want to recall the 2013 tamper tantrum that had emerging economics in the real world. Even though two federal bank promises to are vocal and transparent in its action, the record tell us we cannot be too confident on those claims. Nonetheless, as yet, the federal bank has talked about being careful about the process and has claimed to be waiting for a well-positioned timing strategy. The experts expect an announcement by the end of this year, especially with the soaring inflation, which may not turn out to be as transitory as we think or in fact hope. The last line was made in an attempt to create the connecting link between the expectations of the market players and the resulting impact on the economy. Back in the 2013 mess that created this whirlwind of price falls as because of 
the Fed's chairman decision to curtail the bank's pace of asset purchase, allowing investors to buy forward for the time they expected the Fed to overnight increase the interest rates. Looks like discussion of the transparency this time around is finally making sense. But what if that link between asset purchases and the interest rate breaks? Economists suggest that it could actually lead to a reversal of quantitative easing without the negative repercussions. And to both our surprise and relief, this is actually a seemingly possible solution which, as it looks, has been adopted by the Federal Bank during the unexpected highs and lows of the virus. This makes the region part, if there is necessary, legitimate mechanical link between the bond yields and qualitative easing and the answer seems to be a little inclined towards negations. This point around signaling and intent is very salient features of how quantitative easing operates, says a trader at a big wall, Street Bank, since the end of the March 10, Treasury years have drifted down even as the tampering talk has been become louder.